welcome to today's prophetic word. I'm Kay Nash, and if you're new to this channel, we are in the midst of a 40-day push before Rosh Hashanah 5781, the Jewish or Hebrew year, and we are in day seven, and we are staying before the Lord every day to push us into the next year. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit the subscribe button as we'll be releasing new videos every day at 9 a.m. till September 16th. If you're a current subscriber and you've been watching these videos, congratulations, you have made it through a week of the push. Hallelujah, thank you God. Now today's word I'm feeling is a little bit different as I'm feeling today is a seasonal word. So this is not just for today, this will be for the next several weeks, possibly months for some of you. Um, you'll feel the different anointings for that um, falling, hallelujah. All right, let's get started. The word I'm feeling for today is fire starters. This is specifically what I felt. Be a fire starter for God in this season, the season of the fire starters. Mm. All right, let's jump into the rhema together. Paul threw the sticks in the fire. Throw those provision sticks in as well. They are done. Get rid of them. Even if you get bitten, you are coming up and bringing revival to the nations. I am sending out my fire starters who I have trained for such a time as this to be revealed everywhere. Jesus, I have sent my watchmen in every city and in every nation which are moving with my spirit and moving with my name. They are coming up out of the ground. Hallelujah. Move hard, my children, as I lead you. Mm. You know the sound of my voice. I am taking you to new places you haven't seen and new ways of provision are coming to you. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. You may remember at the beginning of August, I had a, or right before the beginning of August, I had a prophetic vision um, and in the prophetic vision was the provision sticks. And so I feel the Lord referring back to that again. If you're new to this channel and you haven't watched that, go back and watch it. It's August prophetic word. Um, but I saw provision sticks being thrown in the fire. And if you guys remember, basically the provision sticks were our old season of provision. To get rid of the old way of doing things, there's a new way of provision. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Now, obviously, there needs to be a timing of the provision. Um, you know, that doesn't mean go quit your job tomorrow or something like that. Obviously, listen to the Lord. But I feel like the Lord's saying a new way of provision. Mm. Mm. All right, let's go into some verses I felt for this season. Um, now, what I really felt this season would mainly be is the next three weeks. Obviously, when I release these words, sometimes some of you might feel the anointing a little bit sooner or later or whatever because everyone has an individual walk here. But in general, I kind of felt it was for the next three weeks. Um, this is Acts 28, 7. Paul gathered a bundle of sticks, and as he laid them on a fire, a viper driven out by the heat fastened itself into his hand. Mm, talk about a bad day. Okay, a viper comes and bites you on the arm, okay? That is a bad day, all right? But here's what I feel from the Lord. Have you been bitten? Provision is on its way. Mm, mm. Now, if that's not bad enough, Paul's standing there with a, a snake hanging on his arm, just hanging there like this. And it's like, well, he's standing there. Everyone just starts thinking that he's a murderer. Let's go on. Um, when the islanders... When the islanders saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, Surely this man is a murderer. Okay, so now everybody thinks you're a murderer, okay? You already got a snake bitten on your arm. You're just trying to get warm. You just got off from being shipwrecked. Hallelujah. If you go back and read before in uh, 27 and 28, you see the whole story there. But it's just like you're shipwrecked. You guys were starving on the ship. You have to throw food off to just to survive. And then you get bitten by a snake, and then everybody thinks you're a murderer. But then the turnaround came. And I just want to encourage you, if you feel like you've been bitten, hallelujah, the turnaround is coming. Hallelujah. Mm, mm. Now, um, let's go into this. Acts 28, 5 through 6. Paul shook the creature off and threw him into the fire, suffering no ill effects. Mm. The islanders were expecting him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds. Mm, 
Mm. People's minds are going to start changing about you. They might have seen things and not really understood what was going on, but God is opening their eyes just like he opened the Israelites' eyes to Joshua reigning instead of Moses. They opened their eyes. He opened their eyes in that time and showed them who the new leader was going to be. Hallelujah. Mm, mm. All right, let's keep going on in this chapter. There's so much in here. Um, I've studied this chapter intently several times, and so I, I, it's really good if you have time going into a deeper Acts 28, 10. Nearby stood an estate belonging to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us and entertained us hospitably for three days. Um, now the father of Publius was sick in bed, suffering from fever. Um, Paul went in to see him, and after praying and placing his hands on him, he healed the man. After this had happened, all of the sick of the island came and were cured as well. Mm. And then it says, this is a very interesting part, it says, the islanders honored us in many ways and supplied our needs. And some of them say, like, the islanders rewarded us. Now, mm, let's break this apart because this is what I really feel like the Lord highlighting in the next several weeks for us is that, okay, so there might have been a snake bite, but he goes from the snake bite and being called a murderer and all this crazy stuff that he was going through, he was just going through it, to healing an island. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've been following us, a couple days ago we talked about how Jesus' sleep was awoken, but then he performed these miracles, okay? He performed the stopping of the storm, and he performed casting out legion and everything like that. Now, and then, obviously, legion is many demons, but whatever, you know what I mean? And so, this is interesting. It's a similar dynamic here. It's the low to the high, the low to the high, Okay. So we see a healing revival break out because it wasn't just the chief official's father that was healed. The whole island gets healed. A whole island gets healed after the snake bite, okay? So we see Paul step into a healing revival, a healing crusade after the snake bite. Mm, mm. Now, oftentimes, a, a snake that can bite us in the spirit is the spirit of python. We see the spirit of python talked about in Acts 16, 16, okay? And if you don't know my teaching on that, just type in Cain Ash Python, and you can go further into that or read it in one of my books. But essentially, sometimes python will come in and bite you, but that doesn't mean anything really except that the Lord is about to move in your life because the devil is always trying to secure his land because here's what happened. We see right there the regional spirit of Python and a religious spirit, okay? So Paul comes into a new region. He comes into Malta and as he comes to Malta, what happens? The first thing that happens is that he's bitten by a snake. Okay, sometimes when you enter into a new region, you might feel some pushback, but that doesn't mean you're not supposed to be there. This is always something that we have to be cautious out in the Christian faith. I think a lot of Christians, they feel a little bit of pushback and they say, well, this must not have been the Lord's will. No, 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 that doesn't mean it's not the Lord's will. That means it probably is the Lord's will. You're just dealing with a regional spirit. You go to a new city, a new town. You know, one time I, me and my husband went to a honeymoon. We went um, to the Bahamas and it was like, I got attacked as soon as I got there because I, I didn't treat it like a conference. You know, when I, co I go to a conference or something, I pray against regional spirits and things like that, and I go in intercession. But I'm like, this is my honeymoon. I honestly didn't think about that. But then I stepped into the Bahamas, and I started feeling all this pushback, and I was like, wait a minute. I should have I prayed just like I would a conference. And so I would encourage you, maybe you're stepping into a new region. Maybe you're stepping into new territory, and that's why you feel a little bit of spiritual pushback, Okay. But on the other side of that was the healing revival. Now, that was a miracle that he got to do for other people, but he also received his own miracle. It says that Paul was honored in many ways and supplied our needs. Now, when you read the cha couple chapters before Acts 28, you see all the craziness that Paul goes through. It's not just that he was shipwrecked. It's also that he was imprisoned. It's also that he was chained up. It's also that he was having people trying to kill him. Paul goes through all this crazy stuff, all these seasons, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost, all these seasons of dishonor Paul goes through in the end of Acts. But then you see this climax moment where Paul comes in and he's honored at Malta. Finally, Paul is treated correctly, okay? And Paul is supplied with all his needs. So he not only is honored, but his provision is there. It was such a big dynamic there because 
Paul goes from being on a ship where they're about to drown and they basically don't have any food and the food that they do have is actually going to sink them so they have to throw it overboard and to having supplied needs and to having honor, okay? And so you see this dynamic shift and I feel like for some of you in the next three to four weeks, you're going to feel a shift of the Holy Ghost. Now, when I give words like this, if you're not listening to God at all, that's probably not going to apply to you. And then you're going to get angry and you're going to say this, this isn't God and stuff like that. But I just want to encourage you, for those of you following the Lord, this is going to manifest in the next three to four weeks, okay? Now, if you haven't been following the Lord and you're like, uh, I know I haven't been following the Lord, get into repentance and ask God if you could have this word too, okay? You know, God is a God that you can ask Him. If you hear a word that you like, ask the Holy Ghost if you can receive that as well, okay? And He might say yes, He might say no. But I want you to just sit before the Lord and say, God, is my provision coming? Is my honor coming? Because you need to focus on the pure and lovely things right now. Don't focus on that snake bite. Paul could have sat there and focused on that snake bite, right? He could have been like, I've been bitten by a snake. I can't believe it. I've been bitten by a snake. And he could have just sat there. But Paul got up and healed an island. This was, <laughs> this was a beast man. You know, this was a man of God. This was a man that was resilient and seeing in the spirit spirit of God versus seeing in the flesh of God. He had an opportunity to focus on what was going on in his flesh. A snake bite. Ooh, hallelujah. A snake bite. Mm, mm. And many of you have been bitten by an evil spirit and we rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. We bind it up in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost moving. In the name of Jesus be healed from the snake bite. In the name of Jesus may you rise up and heal an island. Jesus may you rise up and bring deliverance to the nations. May you rise up and bring revival to the nations. May the revivalists rise up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May you rise Rise up and move mountains in his name. Mm. He is using you. He is pushing you ahead. He is setting you apart. And that is why you're feeling pushback because the enemy doesn't want you to take the camp that he owns. Jesus, you're going into the camp and you're taking the gold that God has given you. Mm. Take that gold in Jesus' name. Mm. Take those people that God, that the devil has tried to lock up. Mm. Take that provision that the devil has tried to lock up. Take that honor that the devil has tried to lock up. Say, I'm coming in and everywhere my foot touches, it shall be mine. Jesus, everywhere my foot touches, it shall be mine. In the name of Jesus, all I got to do is stand on the ground and the Holy Ghost is going to give me the land in Jesus' name. Mm. I pray today that the Holy Ghost gives you the land. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. In the Bible, it says in 1 Timothy 6, 12, it says, stay in the fight of faith. Mm. It's a fight sometimes to take your land. You know, some people, they get start walking the walk of faith. They start believing for big promises. They go to prophetic meetings and conferences and they see this beautiful vision of God and they get weary and they get burnt out because they've been bitten. Sometimes it's the people that bait you. It's not a, even just a demon. It's an, you know, it's the devil's using that person against you. Okay? And I just want to encourage you. you got to fight the fight of faith. I saw some of you, you're just done. You're done with religionness. You're done with all these communities, all these false people, these people acting like they're for you and they're not for you. I just pray right now you have a revival in your heart in the name of Jesus. You have a kick in your step in the name of Jesus. You say, you know what? I will serve my God and wherever you send me, God, I will go. It doesn't matter if man likes me or doesn't like me because my honor is coming. It came for Paul and it's going to come for me in Jesus' name. My time of provision and honor is coming. My time of healing revivals is coming. My time of bringing people to Christ in the multitude is coming. I'm moving with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to let the devil hold me back from a territory. This is my territory. I saw some of you, you just moved into new houses, Jesus, and you've been feeling like things are crazy. And the Lord says, you have entered the new territory. Now take the land in the spirit. Sometimes you got to take things in the spirit first before you can take it in the natural. You got to take it in the spirit first. Hallelujah. Go into the spirit. The spirit is a real thing. You got to go into the spirit, take it in the spirit, and then walk forward in the natural. I take my land in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm, Jesus. Paul's provision and honor came after the snake, but I want you to take that away today.
And also this, the snake bite is not a sign you are on the wrong path. It is a sign you are on the right one. Mm. Welcome to Malta. Hallelujah. Welcome to Malta. Can you feel it in the spirit? Feel in the spirit you entering into your Malta season. Mm. Mm. The snake bite might have come, but provision and miracles are on the way. A season of provision and miracles. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Paul was just trying to get warm. Mm. Are you being bitten before you're promoted? Mm. Shake it off. You're in line for a miracle. Mm. Mm. Well, you guys, I hope that blessed you today. I hope that encouraged you to remember what's on the other side of this shipwreck. Remember what's on the other side of this snake. I remember what's on the side of this persecution and people thinking things about you that aren't true. On the other side of that is honor. On the other side of that is people's lives being changed. On the other side of that is your provision. Hallelujah. All right, you guys. Well, if you're new to this channel, I would love to have you subscribe for all of you subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. Um, we're at 26,000 now. And so I love you guys. I started out this ministry with 25 people. And so we have grown immensely. We've received the thousand fold in Jesus name. So thank you for staying with us in this time and joining our army of the remnant. Hallelujah. Mm. And if you're blessed by this word today and you feel led, you can sow a seed at knashministries.com. Just click on the giving tab or you can send it to our PO box. All right, you guys, I pray you have a blessed day and a blessed season in Christ. And I'll see you guys tomorrow at 9 a.m. for day eight of our push. All right, love you guys. Bye now.